God, that's weird. You serve a God you can't see. You ain't got a statue of him in your home. You ain't got little fat Jesus sitting on the shelf. No, 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 that's Buddha, and I don't serve Buddha. I might look like Buddha, but I serve Jesus. Y'all, yeah, 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 yeah. So right from the very beginning, the people of God were weird. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to give you the courage to quit trying to be normal. Because you ain't normal. You're supernatural. You're anointed by God. You're a peculiar people. You're weird, man, because you believe things no one else believes. You believe when it's slow, it's time to sow. You believe when you don't have enough, you give more. You believe that laying hands on your sick will cure people of incurable diseases. You believe that a Jew hanging on a cross 2,000 years ago can cleanse you of all sin. That's weird. You believe that he's coming back. You serve some kind of zombie God. He died, but he ain't dead. That's just weird. We might as listen, what I'm trying to tell you is let's embrace it, man. Quit trying to be normal. Hallelujah, Father. So let's, let, me, let me go through some of your ancestry, okay? Abraham, y'all ever heard of Abraham? You, you know how weird Abraham was? He gathered up his stuff and he left the city, get this, going to look for a city not made by human hands. You know, half these people that were giants of the faith, if they came to a pastor today and said, Pastor... I'm leaving town. Okay, that's great. Where are you going? I don't know. But I'm going and look and searching for a city whose maker is God. Human hands haven't built it. You're doing what? I'm looking for a city whose builder was God. Most preachers today, including me most of the time, would say you need counseling. Yeah. <laughs> right? You need to sit down with Crystal. Because Crystal will straight you out. She'll give you some essential oils and tell you you're whack and get you straight. No, 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 listen. I'm going to touch granola Christians in a minute. But I'm saying we're not to be unteachable. But we are to be courageous and understand the, the, the instructions of God. When you've heard from God, his instructions are always spiritual, never logical. That, 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 was, that was powerful right there. God's instructions are always spiritual. They're never logical. They won't make sense to the mind. Years ago in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, there was a man that started a church and it just exploded. I mean, they were literally doing Book of Acts stuff. They were going into the hospitals and laying hands on the sick and getting them healed in the hospitals. Miracles were so common that the news showed up at church the news vans were out in the church parking lot. And one day the founding pastor was asked the question, how did you build such a magnificent Book of Acts church? And you know what he said? He said, we obeyed God quickly before our mind had to give us a chance to talk us out of it. We didn't sit there and when God told us to do something, we didn't care about how it looked. Because if we gave too much thought about how's it going to look, if I go up to this stranger and say, I perceive you're sick, can I lay my hands? Oh, no, no, we don't want to do that because that's weird. We don't want to do the weird. Where the weird means you're marked by the supernatural. If you're not willing to do the weird, we got to risk being misunderstood. That doesn't mean we're unteachable. I'm gonna, I might as well just go ahead. I'm not a proponent of the granola gospel. What do you mean by that? Fruits, flakes, and nuts. 
I'm not a proponent of saying you got to be fruity, flaky, and nutty. The difference between the fruits, the flakes, and the nuts, and the weirdos is the fruits, the flakes, and the nuts are unteachable because they're too spiritual. They don't recognize nobody as above them. The weirdos are willing to be weird, but they're teachable. And that's the difference. we got to be teachable, but courageous enough to obey God. And learn. Is this okay this morning? I'm not following my sermon notes. We might have to pick it up next week. But learn to, under, to appreciate this. Never mistake the will of the majority with the will of God. Because when it comes to your personal walk with God, the majority will never have it right. Never, never. They never get it. They don't need to. Because your walk with God is between you and God. We each work out our own salvation. Is this okay? So we start, we start with the Jewish people. We start with Abraham, every one of them weird. Then I want you to consider Isaiah. Get this, I'm going to just go through this real quick. The behavior of the Old Testament, the, the behavior of the Old Testament prophets was so bizarre. We wouldn't let them in most of our modern day pulpits. And therein is the problem. We want dignified people in the pulpit. Hmm. Consider Isaiah. Listen to this. Isaiah chapter 20. Who stripped off all of his clothes and wandered around naked for three years. That's in the Bible, y'all. How many of you ever heard of Isaiah? I mean, Isaiah had amazing prophecies. Isaiah 53, he prophesied the coming of the Messiah, what he would go through. Isaiah had a unique relationship with God. He was a major voice, a major voice, an anointed man of God who walked around naked for three years. That's weird. That's in the Bible. Well, pastor, I never. And that's your problem. You won't even dance before the Lord, let alone dance your clothes. I want to dance like David danced. I want to sing like David. Man, David got down to his underoos. David danced passionately. David danced enthusiastically. But too many of us, we don't. We're apathetic instead of energetic. We want God to do it all. When all we... How about Jeremiah? Listen to Jeremiah. This is out of Jeremiah 13. Jeremiah stopped washing his underwear. Waited until it got good and funky. Then it hid his underwear under a rock. And after what the Bible calls a long time. Well, I just don't know. This is Bible, bro. He stopped washing his underwear. See, love, I'm just trying to be biblical. When my wife says, you can't wear that on the third day, it's summer. I'm just trying to be biblical. Funk is a sign of the anointing. Who stopped washing his underwear waited until it was good and funky and then hid it under a rock and after a long time went back and retrieved it and put it on. That's weird, man. That's a prophet of the living God. That's a voice of Jehovah. Everyone say, weird. Jeremiah apparently didn't mind parting with his undergarments, but he couldn't be separated from a cattle yoke he had fastened to his shoulders until another prophet broke it off. Walk around with the cattle yoke strapped around him. And then there's Hosea, another eyebrow raiser, who married a prostitute and named their daughter Lo-Rohuma, which means unloved. How acceptable would that be for you to name your daughter unloved? I'm telling you, the instructions of God are never... When we... See, this is the reason why we struggle with the supernatural. 
because we want it to be logical. We want it to make sense. We want it to be 2 plus 2 equals 4, and it doesn't. But if we'll obey the illogical, we'll step into the supernatural. Can I say that again? If we'll obey the illogical. Now, Pastor, what if I make mistakes? We all going to make mistakes. Every one of us are going to make mistakes. But if we keep practicing, eventually we'll learn what is the flesh and what is God. And we'll obey Him more and make mistakes less. And pretty soon people will look at us with wide-eyed wonder. How would you get so anointed? There was a day I found the courage to step out of the boat. I might have sank once or twice, but I kept stepping out. I kept trying. I kept practicing until I, I didn't come out of the womb a maestro. How about Ezekiel? The weirdest of the lot may be Ezekiel. After witnessing a vision of God flanked by four creatures, the prophet ate a scroll that had been given to him. What would you think of someone just sitting right next to you, got so hungry for God in church, they started eating their Bible? I know what you would think. You would move. You saw someone next to you so hungry for God, they just started. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you doing? I got to get the word of God in me. But what if God told them to do it? Oh, God would never. He did too. He's done it before. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ezekiel was also, listen to this, Ezekiel 3. Ezekiel was called to be a prophet, but his ministry initially did not involve any prophetic words, as God had rendered him mute. Now let me ask, what's the number one job of a prophet? To prophesy. But God renders his prophet mute so he can't talk. That's weird. That's what I'm trying to tell you all. This would be such a shorter sermon if you would just understand. We come from a long line of weirdos. They were all weird, and that gives us permission to be weird enough to obey God, to take a risk, to be courageous enough to do something that everyone else thinks is illogical. And it is illogical because Bible, God said he chose the foolish things to confound the wise. Mm-hmm. So Ezekiel took to drawing, depicting an image of Jerusalem under siege on a clay tablet. Then get this, he laid down on his side with an iron pan separating him from his clay art. And after 390 days had passed, he rolled over and repeated. He laid on his side, mute, for 390 days. Then when the 390 days had passed, he rolled over, rinsed, repeated, did it again. Everyone say weird. Next, Ezekiel used a sword to shave off his beard, dividing his hairs into th thirds. He set one third on fire. He scattered another third around the city and stabbed it with his sword. He threw the remaining third into the wind. But he saved a few hairs from such abuse, which he sewed into his clothing. Then he burned some of those hairs too. You getting this? These were our prophets. These were the guys that we admired. How many of you ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth? Smith Wigglesworth would never allow cut flowers into his house. Because when someone, one time, a guy showed up at his house. And I'm going to bring this to a close as soon as I'm done. A guy showed up at his house with a newspaper in his left hand and flowers in his right because that's how you came to someone's house. And when he knocked on the door, Smith Wigglesworth opened up the door, looked at him and said, throw those flowers away. But they're for you. He said, I don't allow dead things in my house. And the moment you cut them, you killed them. Death does not come into my house. Throw them away. So he threw the flowers away and then he took a step and Smith said, stop. He said, that newspaper don't come into my house. I only believe in good news, and there ain't no good news in that newspaper. So you need to leave that newspaper outside. If you want to read it when you leave, that's fine, but you don't bring bad news into my house. That's weird. See, most of us, were so afraid of offending someone that we'll let them come into our house and insult our God. We'll let them come into our house and diminish our faith. 
We'll let them come into our house and cuss because we're too afraid of being the weirdo to say, not in my house, man. You don't talk about my God that way in my house. Do you realize I was homeless till God gave me this house? Do you realize I was helpless till God gave me this? And you're going to come into my house and demean my God that way? Man, that ought to bring out the end. George Jefferson. George wouldn't allow it. Jimmy ought not to allow it. You ought not to allow it. Well, people are going to think you're weird. That's fine. Let them think you're weird. You can be as weird as you want when you've got the anointing on your life. When you pray and things change, they'll come to the weirdos. I tell you what, they'll label you at first and they'll pursue you later on. I want to say that again. They'll label you at first. They'll pursue you later on. When they're, when they're so broken, ain't nobody going to help them. They're going to seek out Aunt Weirdo. And they're going to come to you and say, I know I've made fun of you, but I've watched you. Yep. Yes, sir. Right. I like you. I'm good, man. Hallelujah. I got one minute and 34 seconds and eight more pages. Wow. Joshua. Joshua, listen to this. Joshua instructed his army to walk around the walls of Jericho in silence for six days. Not a sound, not a noise, not a whisper. And on the seventh day, they were to walk around six times in silence. And at the seventh time, at the conclusion of the seventh... Do you imagine what the people within the city thought? A bunch of weirdos walking around in complete silence. Day after day after day. Those weirdos. They believe in one God. You can't find a God. They talk about being blessed. They don't look blessed. They talk about being healed. They don't look healed. We all know they're going through hard times, yet you go to their house and what they're doing, they're they're celebrating. They're singing songs filled with joy and celebration. They ought to be singing the blues. What's wrong with these people? The doctor just told them they're going to die, and they smile. Their house burned down, and they keep smiling. What's wrong with you? you just a weirdo. And on the seventh time, these weirdos shouted. They gave a holler. Ain't nothing changed in the natural. Walls still standing high. Soldiers still on the wall. There's still an obstacle in front of them. They walked around in silence, willing to be called weird. But on the seventh day, the seventh time around, they shouted. And we all know the story. The walls came tumbling down. They they tell us, archaeologists will actually tell us that the walls were pushed down, shoved into the ground by the hand of God. Where is the supernatural? Where is the power of God? Where is the anointing? It's in our weirdness. It's not in our conformity. The mantra of the church today is be relevant. I don't want to be relevant. I want to be powerful. I don't want to necessarily dress like everyone else. I ain't trying to dress differently. I just want to be me. And as Justice pointed out to me one day and set me free, he said, Pastor, you got drip. That became the word that, 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 and I love it now, I got drip. Shalababa. Time won't permit me to go into detail about Jesus, but Jesus wasn't exactly normal. Try spitting on someone in a prayer line, see what kind of response you get today. Try telling everyone they're dogs and see how many people show up at church next week. No, 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 no. Today we got to pat everyone on the back. Jesus spit in their eye. But Jesus had power. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to bring this to a close. We'll have to pick up with it next week. But what I'm trying in a very shabby way is to let you know we come from a long line of weirdos, people who didn't fit in. 
They didn't dress like everyone else. They didn't walk like everyone else. They didn't talk like everyone else. They didn't worship like everyone else. But they had the power of an unseen being in their lives. When, when they went out to battle, they won. When the enemy came, the enemy got vanquished. They would go out and they would get the spoils of war. When, when they left Egypt, there was none sick among them, not even one. And they went out heavy laden with silver and with gold. Uh, listen to me when I tell you this. Our God changeth not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the God of today that he was then, and he wants to do the same things. He just needs a people who are going to be courageous enough and strong enough to say, I'm going to throw off the confines. <clears throat> I'm going to throw off the confines of conformity. I don't know. I, I, when I was 10 years old, I wanted to fit in with them. But I'm 20 years old now, and I've recognized they ain't got it together. I thought they were the in crowd, but they ain't the in crowd. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Paul, Smith, Jesus, they're the in crowd. I want to be with them, so I'm going to be like them. And when you find the courage to be you, there's going to be some people that walk away from you. But can I share this one last thing with you? Yeah. Something that I learned long ago as well, because I'm telling you, I was the most insecure person. I, I, I was a habitual liar. You want to know why? Because I didn't want you to dislike me. Because everyone left me when I was a child. Everyone left me. So I, 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 I bent to the pressure and the desperation of having people in my life. So I, I, I figured, Cleve, if I would lie to you, you'd love me. If I would just tell you what I thought you wanted to hear, I'd be whatever you wanted me to be. Just don't leave me. And that created a habit. And I learned as a liar, liars got to have good memories. Because you don't remember who you told what. But then there came a day I realized I'm not a 10-year-old anymore. I've got to find me. And some of us, we've changed our identity so many times for so many people. We don't even know who we are. We don't even know what colors we like. Because we were so used to saying, I like what you like. So we have totally disowned our individuality. And we wonder where the supernatural is. There's a provision, there's a power that's waiting on you to step out from behind those confines of conformity and just become you. Yeah. Say, Lord, this is who you created me to be. Yeah. And I'm me. And I'm free. And the power of God rests on me because finally, hold your applause just a second. I'm saying, God, you didn't do an injustice by me. You didn't do, you, you weren't unfair when you created me to be me. You created me the way I am because you needed me yes. to be me. Yes. And I'm weird, man. I prefer Motown over Hosanna. I got, listen, I, dan I know, I dance to a beat ain't nobody else hears. <laughs> I sing in notes no other musician knows. <laughs> and I'm fine with that. Got to be. Can I, let me share this. I know we got to close. One day I was in Poland. When we, we, my wife and I lived in Poland, we had this big picture window. And everyone in the village knew that Americans, we were the only Americans that had ever lived in this village. The police, off, the police captain told us so. And after 9-11, they watched us regularly to make sure no one came to hurt us. And so one day I'm listening to The Temptations. And the temptation pulls out a groove. If the temptations don't move you, you're broken. <laughs> and so I'm just in the, and I'm dancing. And I wasn't dancing like this. I was dancing, man. I mean, legs up. And I opened up my eyes, and there's a whole bunch of people standing at the fence watching me. Because there was a big picture window, and we had no, and I mean, they're all like Larry back there, like this, watching me. <laughs> and I froze. And just for a second, I thought, how embarrassing. Then I went, who cares? They've already seen me, so. <laughs> Just be you. Dance is what I'm telling you. Dance. Shout. 
Clap your hands. Lift your praises up to the Lord. When you're in a dark place, give Him praise. When things are slow, learn to sow. Go into prayer and praise Him like you ain't got a lick of sense. Everyone stand to your feet. Lift your hands. And say this with me. Father, Father I'm, tired I'm tired of trying to be normal. You created me to be weird. I'm a weirdo for Jesus. Marked by the supernatural. I have power and provision that comes from another place. I ain't like them. And there's a little and I'll never 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 give another moment a thought or even a penny to trying to fit in again. I'm free. I'm free. In Jesus name. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give Plus Church puts the power of secure smartphone giving directly into your hands. In a few quick steps, you can make gifts and payments through your smartphone. First, go to App Store or Google Play to download the free Give Plus Church app. Just search for Give Plus Church to find it quickly. The first time you open the app, you'll be prompted to enter the name of our church. The next time you open the app, it will already be displayed. You can give as a guest with Give Plus Church or create an account. This will allow you to set up recurring gifts, save your payment information for future donations, and access your giving history. Donations can be made with major debit and credit cards or with a bank account. Enter your information manually or scan your card with your smartphone's camera. You can also check a box that adds to your donation to help offset processing fees. If you're logged into your Give Plus account, you'll also get an emailed receipt. We hope you'll enjoy this new way to contribute to our ministry and thank you for your support. Call or visit the church office to ask about Give Plus Church and the other electronic giving options we offer. Thank you for watching today. For a donation of any amount, we would like to offer you an audio CD of today's message in its entirety. Just contact us here at Real Life Church using the information that is on your screen. For a donation of any amount, an audio CD of today's message in its entirety. Just contact us here at Real Life Church.